Hi, I'm Jenny Shampoo, the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and joining me today is Sean Hopkin. Welcome, Hello. Sean. Thank you. Good to be here. Sean is the chair of the Department of Ancient Scripture at Brigham Young University, and he is one of the principal organizers of the Jewish and Latter-day Saint Academic Interfaith Dialogue Project. He's authored and edited numerous books and articles on Isaiah, the Hebrew Bible, Latter-day Saint beliefs, and medieval literature. And back in 2014, he was the very first chair of the Book of Mormon um, Association um, in Religious Education here at BYU. So today we're looking at chapters 11 through 17 of Mosiah. And the artwork we picked is by J. Kirk Richards. It's called Break the Bands of Death. And this was part of a series that Kirk did in 2020 on yeah. these Mosiah chapters. So first I just want to talk a little bit about how this artwork relates to these chapters. Um, let me start with a, s a couple of scriptures here. Okay, I would love that. Okay. Yeah, because I think he's he's got these verses. You've picked the ones he's got in mind, right? Yeah, Probably, I at think least so. according to the title. Right. Th this spectacular, by the way. I just have to say that yeah. and then we'll come back to the oh, art. Thank you, ah, I appreciate so that. It's so good, yeah. So this is in Mosiah chapter 15, starting in verse 6. And after all this, after working many mighty miracles among the children of men, he shall be led, yea, even as Isaiah said, as a sheep before the shearer is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. So, yeah. so I think one of the things, if I could just jump yeah. in really oh, yeah, quickly here, sure. you immediately get this sense that Abinadi is building from Isaiah. Yeah. And, and that fits him in really well with other Book of Mormon prophets who have loved Isaiah from the beginning and actually have really mm -hmm. structured their writings to interact with Isaiah over and over and over again. Mormon maybe a little bit less, but certainly yeah. he, he's, you see him pulling these kinds of things in. Mm -hmm. But Nephi does this, Jacob does this, mm -hmm. here's Abinadi doing it. Jesus himself is going to say, you should read Isaiah. It's a little circular because of course Isaiah says, thus saith the Lord, so, <laughs> uh, you know. So uh, here's what this, he's just quoted this to them in response to an mm -hmm. accusation they give to him. Okay. And he's saying, you, you need to understand this role, this mm -hmm. uh, messianic role as Latter-day Saints and as okay. Christians understand it, uh -huh. uh, this role here. And so what he's quoting from, let me just give that to you. So it's here in Mosiah 14, verse 7, which is Isaiah 53, this beloved chapter for Latter-day okay. Saints, honestly, <laughs> and for all Christians, really. Uh, he was oppressed, he was afflicted, he opened not his mouth, he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Mm -hmm. So that's the first... Mm -hmm. uh, mention of this lamb imagery as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. And you really get, uh, you know, uh, certainly in Isaiah's context, mm -hmm. lambs and sheep would have been really uh, familiar and both in the sacrificial system, but also as a source of food, as a source of warmth, mm -hmm. um, and the, the behaviors of sheep would have been understood. Sure. And there's sort of this uh, ancient history of kings learning how to be good kings, their shepherds first, or of hmm. leaders, right? Abraham, you get this uh, tradition right. with David, uh, yeah. Jacob, right? Uh, I just switched back and forth historically. But, <laughs> um, but so there's this really beautiful lamb imagery. And then I think that's when, I, this is the launching point for Abinadi, I think now to give us this breaking mm -hmm. the bands of death, yeah. I think here okay. in these verses, right? And I, I apologize, I should have said at the beginning, where we are in the Book of Mormon narrative is Abinadi has been brought before King Noah yeah. here, and this is his sort of speech before King Noah, right? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So so the priests of Noah have mm -hmm. quoted Isaiah 52 as, okay. we, uh, as we have it today and said, hey, why are you not preaching these, uh, these victorious messages yeah. from Isaiah? We're those people. Like we've done what I, we're the people that are fulfilling mm -hmm. Isaiah's uh, prophecies of triumph. And he's saying, okay, let, let's walk through the Ten Commandments and see how well you're actually fitting mm -hmm. that model of morality, of ethics, mm -hmm. of biblical ethics. And let me let me read, just turn the page, so mm -hmm. to speak. Let's read Isaiah 53, and you're missing the role of the one who will suffer, the, the suffering servant, as he's known in biblical studies. Yeah, so this, this is okay. what we're doing here. He's defending, but also teaching. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, so going back to continue with Mosiah 15, now we're in verse 7. Yea, even so he shall be led, crucified, and slain, the flesh becoming subject even unto death. 
the will of the Son being swallowed up in the will of the Father. And thus God breaketh the bands of death. There's the first one. Having gained the victory over death, giving the Son power to make intercession for the children of men. Having ascended into heaven, having the bowels of mercy, being filled with compassion towards the children of men, standing betwixt them and justice, having broken the bands of death. There it is. Taken upon himself their iniquity and their transgressions, having redeemed them and satisfied the demands of justice. So, and thank you for yes. for uh, giving us those connections. Just a little bit more with Isaiah. Those yeah. who know me know I do like to <laughs> spend a little bit of time in Isaiah. But like um, this artwork that we're going to spend a little bit of time on here in just a moment, mm -hmm. this, what Abinadi is doing, and really what Isaiah is doing is quite visceral. Mm. Uh, it's hmm. This is a suffering servant. This is mm -hmm. a rejected one. This is yeah. uh, an an excommunicated one from mm -hmm. society, a cursed one, you might say, okay. who then will triumph, right? But who is going to understand mm -hmm. what it is like to experience loss, death. In mm -hmm. fact, Isaiah's overriding concern. So he uses that lamb imagery as a lamb to the slaughter. Mm -hmm. And then you just read it. He will be slain, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And crucified, but as a lamb to the slaughter. And this concern Who's going to declare his generation? He dies. What about mm -hmm. his, the posterity is such a big deal mm -hmm. uh, in ancient mm -hmm. societies. Um, who will declare his generation? He's cut out of the land of the living. Uh, he made his grave with the wicked. It pleased the Lord. I'm sort of skipping forward. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. Uh, and, and the Hebrew to crush him. Oh, wow. um, hmm. He hath put him to grief. And then this back to the lamb imagery, his soul and offering for sin. And so this is oh. so rich mm, yeah. with symbolism, this text is. And so then to have this beautiful artwork flow in the way Abinadi is doing this through Isaiah and then into Isaiah, the way that Abinadi interprets it, these triumphant uh, conclusions but the triumph is enhanced by an understanding of the depth of the experience of sorrow and oh, suffering. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so wow. that, that's maybe, maybe spending a little too yeah. much time here because <laughs> we want to talk about this art, but, but th they really connect beautifully together. Yeah, I love that. And I think that segues perfectly into looking at the art because I think it also shows that duality of sort of coming down low. Um, I mean, even this pile of bones. Um, and then, but then Christ rising triumphant, almost like he's floating up um, as you see the bands snapping, <laughs> uh, the bands that are on his wrist like shackles, these bands of death. And you see a figure of the skeleton, maybe even a symbol of death, pulling, <laughs> pulling on this chain maybe, but Christ is breaking free in a really triumphant image. Yeah, even, and I don't know if Kirk Richards, you know, we'd have yeah. to ask him yeah. if he would uh, appreciate what I'm seeing here, but mm -hmm. almost, like if you think of uh, Marvel Comics, this that yeah. is yeah. so inappropriate to talk yeah. about Kirk, but, but some of that artwork's quite nice, right? The, anyway, but this heroic sort of snap, yeah, right? He, yeah, he gives yeah. you the snap here uh -huh. as someone, a heroic figure, but this is a heroic figure that uh, the emphasis isn't necessarily on how he looks, it's on mm. what he does. Yeah. It's not what Jesus looks like here, right. it's on his role as a breaker of bands. And look at the red robe that's so right. uh, indicative of suffering, of sorrow. Yeah. Uh, of course, Isaiah 63 is going to talk about the one who comes from the east mm. uh, dressed in robes of red, oh. right? The This is what happened as I trod the the uh, the wine, wine press, press yeah, right uh -huh. alone yeah. and so that imagery is here with even I love that sort of little halo effect yeah. that, uh, uh -huh. that he's uh, given here he does yeah I'm so glad you pointed out the undefined facial features of Christ here which is, is interesting and just leave some room for the viewer to bring their own interpretations to the piece and like you said focus on the action now, this isn't an actual moment that's described right. in the scriptures. Right. It's a little more thematic, maybe, like Kirk's being creative as an artist mm -hmm. and thinking, okay, mm -hmm. how do I visualize this idea of breaking the bands of death? But 
But I like that. It's not, we don't always see that in our Latter-day Saint art. A lot of it is just very narrative and, you know, just illustrating. Here's a moment and now we're yeah. re depicting it. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's your response to that? Do you, do you find that it helps you engage with the scriptures in a different way? Or? Well, really, really powerfully, um, which is not a surprise for his artwork, which yeah. is, uh, I think, well known for, yeah. for uh, having a really strong impact. And it, it does for me. Um, if I were to compare it to some uh, beautiful Latter-day Saint art, mm -hmm. we I think traditionally we have uh, focused on resurrection scenes, triumphant, and they're mm -hmm. sweet, they're yes. peaceful, mm -hmm. maybe they're they're triumphant, mm -hmm. but they're they they show life, they show sort of the this peaceful triumph, right? And this is more the the moment of triumph and it's like he's ascending. Mm -hmm. We just read from Isaiah where he's made his grave, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. At least temporarily, yeah. right? With the wicked. And there may be echoes here of the descent into Sheol, mm -hmm. into the spirit world as First Peter 3 is right. going to discuss and is so important to Latter-day Saints. Yes. Doctrine and Covenants 138 mm -hmm. connects here. But, but this image uh, it's really rich here, this yeah, image of yeah. death, because we experience this. And sometimes as Latter-day Saints, we just want to say, no, it's all beautiful. It's all good. Mm -hmm. And it is eternally speaking. But yeah. part of that is really descending through sure. it. Sure. Uh, really yeah. experiencing sometimes some prolonged right. um, sorrow and yeah. decay and uh, dissolution. You right. Know? And I love that this depicts the way Christ was our exemplar and that, that we know that he's He's descended below all things and um, and that we can look to him. We've all lost uh, loved ones it, mm -hmm. it, that's closer or further from us. I lost an older brother to cancer just a few years ago, my best friend. We grew up sharing a room, you know, and and uh, he was on the top bunk. I was on the bottom bunk because he was older, so he got the yeah. top bunk. And, yeah. and uh, we stayed close uh, throughout our lives. And uh, there's, there's this sense of deep loss and then the triumph there and so and it's not just death of course we have uh, so many many deaths in our mm -hmm. lives and so like it the this imagery the loss of a career the loss of a hmm. relationship mm -hmm. when when things break apart that we had placed a lot of hope and that yeah. uh, sort of were bound up in who we are and what mm -hmm. our identity is it mm -hmm. can feel like we're just a skull you know yeah. like just a like remnants of what we thought right. life was going to be and it this is very real right yeah. and and those that we love and mm -hmm. should love suffer and mm -hmm. we suffer mm -hmm. and there is a savior, a heroic savior figure who mm -hmm. meets us in those spaces and then yeah. helps resurrect us but yeah. to honor the depths of those spaces i think is partly what mm -hmm. kirk richards this particular mm -hmm. piece of art and what his art often does is to honor the wrestle the struggle yeah. and those words probably don't even convey it and and i would say that that's why mm -hmm. as i was uh, knowing we were going to be discussing this piece of artwork today i thought yeah i this connects with me on a visceral level and is meaningful mm -hmm. to me it meets me wow. where i am in my spaces of loss oh. and and gives me hope. Yes, yeah. Thank you for sharing that personal experience and, um, and sharing your, your beautiful testimony, too. Thank you. And thanks for being with us today. Yeah, my pleasure, Jenny. This is beautiful. Thank you.